Hello, I'm going to be explaining uh, Uconan's algorithm. This is for COT 5405 um, spring semester uh, 2021. And yeah, we're going to talk about suffix uh, tree creation. Um, so this algorithm was created by Usko Ukonen in 1995. He's a Finnish computer scientist. And this algorithm was uh, came out after Weiner's algorithm, which was the first suffix tree creation algorithm in O of N time. Um, this uses substantially less memory than Weiner's algorithm. And we're going to go ahead and just talk about the rules of this algorithm and how it operates. And then I'm going to give you an example with um, some applications for the algorithm. Um, so you start by working your way from the beginning of the given string that you are given and um, going to the end of the string. So you'll be traversing through this string uh, once each letter, so n times. That's why it's no n squared algorithm. And um, at each phase, we will be uh, make sure that uh, you know, if we have traversed through the first three, then we have all the suffixes from the first three uh, already inserted into the tree and it exists. And if we were to stop there, then it would be complete. Um, so that's the second rule. And uh, the, sec the third thing is that uh, instead of representing, uh, using memory, instead of representing each edge as uh, a letter, or a list of letters. Um, each edge is only represented as um, the two points, the beginning point of the original character and the an end point of the original character. So for example, um, if you had uh, the string C-A-T, then you wanted to represent an edge with just the, the A in the middle, then it would just be uh, one to one if we're starting at index zero, the next one to index one. The next one would be uh, where this, you know, where the middle one would be. So um, and then going with this algorithm, at each, at each uh, phase, at each letter, uh, we increase the remainder and the end value. Um, so, and this remainder is used to uh, further create part of the tree and the end value just um, make sure that we add the last value uh, to the string that we're adding it in. Um, and then uh, if the character that we're adding does not exist, we just add it in and decrease the remainder. If it does exist, um, we highlight where it exists and we just continue on to the next part of the uh, algorithm. Um, once after we do that and we, we get to a part of the algorithm where uh, since we are decreasing the remainder, uh, the remainder for the next algorithm, for the next part of the algorithm will be higher. So, um, yeah, we will, if we do get to a point where we need to add in a new string, we have to continue add, adding in new letter, a new letter until the remainder goes to zero. And we connect those using suffix links. And suffix links are only used to create the string, uh, create the tree. They are not used to represent the actual tree itself. So they're just a, a tool used to create the string. So I think the best way to show you is through an example. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to you create the string C A T C G C A T, and I've added in a dollar sign at the end of it um, just to make sure that no uh, suffix is a prefix of any other suffix. Um, I've also initial, uh, created some variables that we haven't initialized yet. Um, and I just represented the string as a, um, let me get the highlighter. So I represented the string as an, uh, with each index, and I have all of these variables that we will be using. Um, so the first thing would be to add in a node, root node, we're going to label this root node zero. And we're just, we haven't started running the algorithm yet, this is more of an initialization step. So, um, you know, we just initialize the remainder to zero. The active node is the root. 
and there is no lens coming out of it yet. Um, we currently don't have an end or an edge, any edges. So we're going to start the process of adding in um, first letter, in the, which is the C. And um, so we start the every phase. We start the we started by uh, increasing the remainder and um, updating the end. Right now, the end is index zero, um, and we just increase the remainder. And from here, uh, we check. Is there a C coming from our active node, which is root? It has no active edge. Is there a C coming out of here? And the answer is no. There is no C coming out of here. So we actually add in that C. Um, notice how this C is is um, only for this presentation's purposes. What we really add in is um, these. This is uh, association, which is. Uh, from index zero to the end, all oh, this is what this edge is. Um, so we're not actually adding in the C. That would take up a lot of space in memory if we. Um, if we I'll show you if we keep um, going through this. Um, and so we've added this in, and since we've just added in the node, our next step would be to decrease the remainder. And that at this point, we are done with the. Uh, with this phase, so if we were to stop, um, this goes back to our rule. If we were to stop right here, we have all suffixes at zero, okay, which is only one suffix. So we can continue on to the next step, and we're gonna look at adding an A at index from index one, and we start this uh, this iteration. We started by increasing the remainder by one, and increasing uh, the end value by one. Notice that increasing this n value by one, um, this edge is automatically updated. This is uh, an important part of the algorithm, and this is what adds a lot of speed to the algorithm. Everything is done automatically. Um, just by increasing one variable, we were able to increase this edge automatically. Now, once we have a lot of variables, this comes into play, and I will show you that uh, later. Um, and now we ask ourselves, we look at our active node, which is root. We haven't changed anything. It's still root. And we ask ourselves, is there an A coming out of here? And the answer is no, there is no A coming out of here. So what would we do? We add in the edge and we label this node too. And now we have another, um, this, a, this A here is represented from index one to the end, right now it's one one. Um, this is what the set is represented by, and um, we can decrease the remainder, and we are done with this iteration. And once again, from zero to one, this is the suffix tree. This we are we are done. We we will never need to come back to check. We can stop here if we wanted to. If CA was the only thing that was that we wanted to make a separate street, this is what it would look like. Um, so let's continue adding in T. Um, you know, you like same process. You increase the remainder, increase the end, automatically updates the other edges. Uh, we check if there's a T coming in from the active node. There isn't. We add it in. Um, and then we uh, decrease the remainder. And it's just like the first two steps. And this is straightforward. You're just adding in edges because every, nothing exists yet. So now we get to adding in the letter C. And this is where the algorithm starts to get um, different rules applied to it. So from C, we start. The uh, we start this iteration very simple, like we started the other ones. We increase the remainder and we increase the end. And now notice how we just did three things automatically. This comes in very handy. This is why this algorithm is so efficient. And um, we check from this root node is there a C? And the answer is yes, there is a C. So what we do is we highlight that C. And we update the active node, node that active edge and length. The active node is still zero because we haven't gotten to any other node. And we just update the active edge. The active edge is C because we're going to C. 
and the, the length is one, and this is where we're at. So we just highlighted it. We're, we never really added anything in. We didn't decrease the remainder. The C is just highlighted, which means we will need to go back to the C. But if we were to stop this tree right here, this since one suffix is a prefix of the other, then this um, would be what the tree would look like, given that we were given this bad input. So this is still correct in a way, but to further in, uh, add more things, we do need to realize that, hey, this C, we didn't do anything with it. Um, so now let's start the next process of adding in the G. G has not been, is, is a new, pretty much a new string to this. Um, so we start this like we started all the other iterations, increase the remainder, increase the end. Everything automatically gets a G at the end, that's updated. Our remainder is at two. And now, instead of asking, um, is there a G from root, we actually start from where we highlighted, and that was the C. So from this C, is there a G? And the answer is no, there is no G coming from this C. So we add, we um, split this, from this C, we split this AT, ATCG as, as one N, and we actually add in just from this C to G which rep represents um, this from C to G. So this exists from four to four right now, and this increase, this exists from one to four. So this string here represents C, A, T, G, that's from zero. Um, this right here represents from one to N. This right here represents from two to N. And this right here represents um, uh, C3 to N. But notice that we are actually using an initial part of it. And this is um, another um, smart thing that's done with this algorithm. Um, and so since we did that, we added in a internal node. And this internal node has um, some specific rules it has to follow. Um, there will be, it has a suffix link from this node to zero to the root node because it, every time you add in an internal node, you just have to create the suffix link. And a suffix link doesn't actually change the structure. Uh, we also decrease the remainder in the next step. And this is step of adding the suffix link. Um, the suffix link does not change the structure of the tree, but it does aid in helping create the tree. So this is something we need to keep in mind because when we're creating the tree. And what it means is we have to go back to zero. Uh, we'll go back to the root. Since we just added this, we go back to the root where it came from. Um, so now our active node is still the root, but our active edge, we don't have an edge anymore. We're not at the C anymore because we just added something and we decreased the remainder and our length is zero because we're at this node. And now when we're at this node, we have to, um, we, we can't continue adding in the C. We have to continue going until the remainder is zero before we can go on to the next phase. So at this node, we're still at G. Is there a G coming from the zero? And the answer is no, there is no G coming from this root node, so we add it in. Oh, yeah, we add it in. And now we decrease the remainder, and we have a perfectly done suffix tree from zero to four. See, these are all the suffixes. Um, so that is the um, straightforward application of this tree. So let's continue on by adding in C. Um, we increase the remainder and the end node. And notice how now this step here is actually getting really valuable. We just added in five uh, to five edges in automatic C, which is very, very helpful. Um, since C already exists in this tree, we do nothing, but we update the uh, active node. Um, so this C here, this node is highlighted. So from, from we from the next from when we start the next phase, we are no longer checking from the root node. We're checking from this node because we're going in the direction of C. 
So the active node is updated to four. Um, we're just at the node, so we don't need to update any edges. And since we're at this node, the length is zero. So we just highlight this C here, and we continue to the A. Um, once again, automatic update of two, and, and, and the A is added into all ends, uh, all edges. And we check from this four, is there an A? And the answer is yes. So highlight that, update your active node, edge length, all that. The active node is still four, the active edge is now the A, and we have a length. Those are just updated. Um, and we can continue adding in the T. So increase the remainder, increase the end, an automatic addition. And now from this A, is there a T? And the answer is yes, there is. So we can just highlight that and you know update everything. This this active length is now two from four or two. And now we're gonna get to a new uh, letter in this new character in this uh, tree. And we're gonna add in this dollar sign, which we use that I added in arbitrarily uh, just to make sure that no suffix is the prefix of any other. Um, so let's increase the remainder. We're still doing our, our basic iteration step um, and increase the end. And everything is automatically updated. That's nice. Um, and now we ask ourselves, where, uh, where are we? We are at this T right here, this node, going to this edge at this node. We're at this T. From this T, do we have a dollar sign? And the answer is no. So we're going to split from this T. We're going to add go AT dollar sign. And this is going to stay its own edge. And do that. And once we add in um, an edge, we decrease the remainder. And um, this internal node that we just added points to the root node. So we will be actually going back to the root node. It has a suffix length. Remember, the suffix length is only used for creating uh, the tree. It's not used for the actual tree. And we can also decrease the remainder. And since we're at this new node, we need to, uh, we're pointing to the A, T, because those were the ones that we still had highlighted. And now we're in the direction of AT and we're updating this active node. Um, and now we need to ask ourselves on this T right here, is there a dollar sign? And the answer is no. Oh, okay. yeah, so let's just uh, ask ourselves on this T, is there a dollar sign? And the answer is no. So we split it from this after this T. And now we have AT dollar, AT CG, CAT dollar. And we can uh, decrease the remainder. And uh, another step is that uh, this new node actually points, uh, is a pointer from the last node. I think. So this node here points to root like it should it was just created, but the last splitted, the internal root that was added at will point to the node that we just created. And this is only uh, created for creating the tree. This doesn't represent the actual tree. And um, we can take out the remainder, go down the remainder. Um, and now we can update our active edge to we're looking for the T. So our active edge is the T. And now we ask ourselves, so we continue, we ask ourselves, from this T, is there a dollar sign? The answer is no. So we split it here. And the last uh, node here, so we can split it here. After the T, notice how we split after the T. We added a dollar sign because we needed a dollar sign. And from uh, this nine here, this was the last internal node that we added, will actually point to the new internal node we added. And this node that we just added will point to root. And um, now we're at zero. 
uh, we have to do third, and from this we know result R star changes with now. So we add it. Um, and that is the creation of the subtle tree. Um, notice how we just uh, went through this tree n times. I mean, we went through the string once for each value. So this was done n times. It's a very efficient algorithm. So now let's talk about some applications for this these trees. Um, two easy applications. Um, one is find string. The other is one is common prefix. So find string, um, we want to find if there is a substring, if a string is a substring of the suffix tree, or of, of the actual, you know, what we created as suffix tree. Um, and it's a very simple algorithm. You just check it starting you're traversing to the string that's given to you and you're just um, going down the, the tree, making sure it's there. Um, and if you ever reach the dollar sign, it means it does exist. If you get to a point where it, it you don't, it doesn't follow, it doesn't match, then it's not a substring. You, you can't find it. Mm -hmm. So an example, we're going to find the CAT. So we start at the root node and we ask ourselves, is there a C coming from this root node? Yes, there is. Good. So, so far, so good. Um, next, we're at this four. Um, and we ask ourselves, from this four, is there an A? So we're checking for A. The answer is yes. We have an A. And then after this A, this, um, is there a T? The answer is yes. Therefore, it was successful. Um, oh, from this T, I guess, yeah, from this T, we actually, I forgot that we do actually have to check if there is a dollar sign here. So, I guess once we're at the end of our string here, check the dollar sign, the answer is yes, and we are good. Now let's find the tag, or T-A-G. Um, we can start with this T. Um, it does exist. And now we're looking for an A. There is no A. Where there's only two places you can look. If it's not there, that means we have failed. That's a very, very simple application. Um, pretty useful. Um, given if we create a huge suffix tree, that, that will save a, a lot of time. Um, especially since some of those you know, for DNA, it's about, I think the professor said it was 0.6 gigabytes is, is just the string itself, and the suffix tree is even larger than that, and he works with compressing those. Um, and then another application is the longest common prefix. Um, so yeah, given two pairs return their longest common prefix, and, um, you know, just try to find what is it on common prefix? I mean, it's a, it's a simple task. Um, so what we do is we find the lead node because we're, we're, we're going to assume that it does exist, that we've used our find string and it does exist. Um, and the, they will be represented as lead nodes because at the end we're making sure that there's a dollar sign. And we're, um, the, the goal is to find the node that connects these two leaf nodes, um, whatever closest um, to each node is, and then just get all of the, um, just get the edges going back and, you know, just put them together, and that is the longest common prefix. So uh, an example is we're going to find the longest common prefix of um, 1 and 5, which is... C A T C G and C A T C A T C G C A T dollar and C G C A T dollar. Um, this one and five comes from the beginning to the end. So from index one to end, from index five to end. That's why this is written like this. Um, so first we locate those two lead nodes. There they are, and then we find the node that connects them. And that node is four. 
and then using all the edges that go back to root, um, that's going to come to fix. See, that's just one. Um, and that's it. Um, so here is my sources. Um, if you want to have a look at it. And that is the application and for this uh, tree and the creation of the tree in end time. Thank you for listening. Happy day.